the Riverside Rink, well, Durham's first taste of international hockey turned into an absolute feast. All Durham knew about their first European opponents were that Jezunici had won their league 20 times, they had eight internationals, and that once the season started, they played hockey full time. It was quite enough background thank you for the Durham amateurs who had all done a day's work beforehand. Well, we don't really know anything. I've seen them there for about three minutes and that's it. You know, we didn't want to get to know anything about them really. Because we didn't want that whole, whole game. We just keep our same game and uh, hope that everything goes okay for us. The Europa Cup was created 20 years ago, but British clubs were so far behind they thought it a waste of time entering. Two years ago, Dundee first carried the flag only to be hammered out of sight. Now it was Durham's turn to bring the responsibility south of the border. Their commitment was absolute. The Yugoslavs had no idea what to expect, but they very soon found out they were in for one almighty battle. And after nine minutes, Durham got their reward when 16-year-old Anthony Johnson gave the Wasps the lead, assisted by older brother Stephen. Within a minute, the coach's two sons had conjured up a second. It was an inspired start that caught their classy opponents completely by surprise. When Paul Tilly picked up goal number three, those fears of a slaughter were dead and buried. Even though Yezunichi pulled a goal back, a 3-1 lead at the end of the first period was more than the Wasps had dared hope for. It's an excellent start, that. It's, uh, the lads have worked their hearts out there. They've really gone at them and never given them... You know, they, they haven't given them a quarter of a second. As soon as they get the puck, the boys are on them, and I think that's upsetting them. Durham's high carried over into the second period, with Paul Tilly capitalising on a 4-3 advantage. Three minutes later, it was 5-1 to Durham, with captain Mike O'Connor celebrating a dominant performance with a cracking goal. But Yezunichi had refused to lose their composure. Durham defended frantically, but the Yugoslavs soon poached their second goal. In world terms, Yugoslavia are in a different class to Britain, and their champion superior pedigree began to emerge. Marco Schmoller scored his second, 5-3. Marjan Koshar converted a penalty shot, and now there was just one goal in it. By the second interval, Durham had made it 6-4, and already it was a great night for British ice hockey. We caught them cold, we've got the goals, we're ahead, and look, hopefully we're going to stay there. But even if we don't stay in front, we have done more for British ice hockey in two periods than ice hockey has seen apart from Heineken's introduction to the big fan ice hockey in the last 20 years. All of British ice hockey is watching us. Uh, some people said we'd fall flat on our face and be humiliated. 6-4 at the end of the second period is not a humiliation, that's glory. Because uh, deep down you did have a, a sneaking worry that you might get hammered really, didn't you? Well, absolutely. And everyone else, if they told the truth, thought we would get hammered as well. Whatever happens in the last period, we are going to end up as glory boys. Durham had always feared the Yugoslav strength in depth. They were virtually running four lines to Durham's two. They soon made it 6-5. Then, with nine minutes left, a mistake by a rapidly tiring home side gave Bojan Razbets the equaliser. Still, Durham would not give up. The crowd went through agonies, especially when Paul Tilly couldn't take advantage of a penalty shot. Then, with less than three minutes left, Kojar gave Jezunice a heartbreaking winner. A 7-6 defeat seemed so disappointing, but in truth, Durham Wasps had given British ice hockey genuine international credibility. The lads give everything tonight. They, they're sitting in there now and they just, they just shattered, you know, because they give everything. Uh, I think we surprised a lot of people tonight. You know, uh, Yugoslavia, we expected a, str a strong team, and definitely they were a strong team, but I thought that uh, you know, after the game was over, the boys keep their heads up, we played a hell of a game. A lot of people were talking about a walk away score for the Yugoslavs, but uh, as I say, I think we've proved every, everything. <laughs> I think we've proved everybody wrong. I mean, Frankie Killen, the goalkeeper, he had a fantastic game tonight, you know? <laughs> That's good. We'll beat them in the second leg now. No bother? No problem. And then it's Russia next. That's a bit optimistic. The Russians always win it, don't they? They certainly won it for the last uh, half dozen years, I think. But whatever happens in the second leg in Yugoslavia, nothing can undo the fantastic work that Durham did last night. It really was an absolutely amazing performance, a superb atmosphere. I don't think that Durham perhaps get the credit that the, the Wasps deserve. I mean, after all, they're getting 3,000 crowds every week, and there's a lot of third division clubs will be very grateful for that. Anyway, 